everyone, Joe here from ActionX. Welcome to What's in the Tube, or welcome back if this is your ninth DC Stargirl episode review. Hope you're all doing well. Hope you're all doing good, being safe, being good to each other. Do not, actually I should, um, I'm going to mute that. I'm playing Ghost of Tsushima, and once again, I completely forgot to DVR Stargirl, even though I keep saying, oh my god, the show's great, it's amazing, um, but I keep forgetting to DVR it because, not because I'm not able to watch it on Tuesdays, but because... I just generally have other stuff to do, usually editing, um, and then by the time I remember, oh, frack, I forgot the DVR, it, um, I usually forget, so I have to watch it online. Um, also, Ghost of Tsushima came out today, the day as I'm recording this, so, um, I was a little, little not, in, I was kind of out of it, so, um, so, apologies. Um, so, don't, that, this has nothing to do with, um, Stargirl, don't worry, so usually I know, like, it's associated, this has nothing to do with Stargirl. Um, anyway, let's get that to it. This week, um... What was it? Because, again, it was a very... Again, like, for me personally, um, weeks are very slow, but the month is very fast. It's crazy to believe that the season's almost over. I mean, I, sure, we still have, like, five full episodes level after this one, four. Uh, but it's just crazy to, to, to think that we're already approaching the end of the season, and while it's great that we're going to get a season two sometime next year, hopefully, um, it's still very much... Um, but still, it's still crazy for me that, you know, the season's almost over, um... And we are inching very much closer to me trying to figure out what the new schedule is going to be like after. It, it, uh, last thing before I, I we actually get to the episode review um, is that Star Girl, Doom Patrol, and per Perry Mason. All of our episode reviews will be ending around the same time, so it's kind of scary for me to think like, what the hell am I going to do since there isn't like the limited amount. Like given, given we're still in COVID, and not everything. Well, I think like maybe ten percent. Uh, productions have resumed filming but those are mostly movies um so it's crazy to think that i'm basically screwed when we come back um but hopefully we'll we'll, we'll figure some, we'll figure out something out but anyway let's get down to this um i really enjoyed this week this felt more personal this felt more um this is, it felt like the beginning of a two-parter but it's not advertised as a two-parter plus since we just came off of a two-parter um last week and the show's definitely being smart with its um with what, what we're doing with the story. Since after last week's two parter, I would have loved to see how a dynamic between Courtney and Cindy would have been in school with them both knowing their secret identities. But since this week, um, they kind of explain why we're not getting that ASAP, um, and then also moving the focus to the next, um, the next generation, the next member of the the new the future ISA. Um, it was smart, um, and also we got more, you know, backstory on one of our already established villains since the very first episode. We got to see a little bit more of him, um, getting to see how, like, Courtney's worlds are slowly beginning to merge, even though, again, I know it's only the first season, but it's still crazy how quickly things are progressing and how quick things are happening that usually I wouldn't anticipate to, like, maybe much later on in the story. Um, so I'm giving kudos to the show that they're doing their own thing and not following the typical tropes of superhero, um, either shows or movies. Um, but to know more about that, let's get through it. Let's get through the butcher recap as I can explain more about it. So we begin, um, a little bit weird. Like at first we begin at this laboratory where we see the scientists having these similar brain attacks that, um, Henry Jr. has been going through lately. So... It's a little confusing because I thought that, oh, is this happening present day? Is this like, oh, we're seeing Henry Jr. kind of like turn to the bad side already? But then we, as we slowly start to realize, no, this is actually Brainway himself, younger. And kudos to the makeup department for like making him look like younger. Like, I know it's weird. Like, the, the actor doesn't seem that old, but they just made him younger, which is all the props to that to like making that happen. Um,. So he's getting robbed um, as he's leaving his laboratory. Uh, but during the robbery process, he actually manages to stun the robber with his mind. And then he somehow kills him with his mind. And then we begin him see we, 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 we see him um, begin to record himself via tape and begin to document his process on him learning his newfound powers. But then we cut to present day where Henry Jr. is back at his house. I'm assuming after seeing the fight between um, Cindy and Stargirl. Shocked by it, also in the revelation that he has powers, looks to the walls of his um, dad's secret um, lair or shrine, and sees the, sees these tapes lying on the wall, and you know he grabs day number one, and you know he gets an old Panasonic v VCR, which I'm like, damn, it's that old. 
um, he pl he puts it in and he starts to see that this is a, a documentation as well as kind of as an instruction how to manual for these new powers since uh, Brainwave is still in a coma so he can't really train his son yet to use his powers so um, with that being said however um, so Henry starts to go through or Henry Jr. starts going through it starts learning his powers starts getting more confident in his powers and it's slowly realizing that like we're we're witnessing the birth of the of a junior supervillain. We're witnessing it firsthand. Um, so we cut to the next day, well, and then the same night where Courtney is still in shock on the events of that night that he, she fought Cindy. That Henry Jr. has powers like his dad, um, and Courtney's only real the thing to come out of it is that we can use Henry Jr. We can use him. We can make him join the JSA as like. The first non-legacy, you know, member that he's not, you know, he's not passing on the, um, well, actually, sort of pat a non-legacy member, but technically he was part of the original, somewhat, whatever. Um, so Courtney has that idea. Pat's like a little bit like hesitant on the idea since again he does have this associated with the ISA, especially even with his father out of commission. You're still dealing with the other members. But, you know, Courtney, once, once she sets her mind on something, she's not really going to stray from it. Uh, and then we, and then the next day, Beth's off to school, going to check on Cindy, seeing, like, okay, what's happening since the attack? And Cindy's not there. Her, the, the stepmom isn't there either, so something's up. And, of course, according to school records, she's been pulled from school. She's heading to a transfer program overseas, so um, she's not going to be in school for at least ever. But however, meanwhile, back in the Dragon King's lair, it turns out no, Cindy's been locked up for her insubordinates for fighting Courtney again, even though technically it's not her fault. And the Dragon King's like, y y you've done too much shit. You're being locked up for a while. You're going to be um, sidelined for a bit. Um, and then I'm going to connect this here because it kind of works. Um, so Dragon King he heads down to the meeting room with the other ISA members and talks to them about the revelation that Henry Jr. has power so they don't have to wait. That they don't have to wait wait for Brainwave. They could just immediately go through with Henry Jr. as the amplifier instead of using Brainwave. So they could still now... The, Dragon King's pretty much moved up the plan. It's like, okay, we can make this all happen by the end of the week. So um, that's cool. That's cool for them. Um, back at the school, Courtney is kind of pitching the idea of recruiting Henry Jr. to the new JSA. And of course, everyone's like a flat... Well, only, only, um, only Rex... No, only Rick... And um, Yolanda are like, hell no, this isn't happening. Uh, especially to Yolanda, because like, I understand Yol Yolanda's position. That Courtney's basically offering a position on this team to the man, well, the, the boy who basically ruined Yolanda's life in the first place. So, of course, Yolanda's going to be mad. And I understand Courtney, like, she needs, we need all the, she needs all the allies she can get in this war with the ISA. But to, to even, like, me thinking as a human being, like, I would never associate myself with anyone who would, um, hurt or, like, damage the reputation of one of my friends. Forget it. Uh, and I know, like, Courtney and Yolanda's friendship is still, still new, basically. I mean, I know everyone's acting like BFFs at this point, even though it's only been, like, what, a couple of weeks or, I don't know the timeline of the show, but you know what I mean. I just, I would not have supported that, and I do understand Yolanda and even, um, Rick's position on it. Beth's trying to support Courtney, saying that, hey, listen, you know, we've all changed. We're all different people since joining this new JSA. So uh, we should get Henry, give Henry Jr. the champ, but Yolanda doesn't, doesn't agree with it and she storms off. Um, and then we we see Henry Jr. Still in, still in his dad's study, still training, still learning how to use his powers. He gets a visit from the housemate that uh, the lawyer's on the phone. He's going to want to meet with him soon, but Henry Jr. just leaves and heads off to the hospital. Um, and then we cut to back to the, the the place where things have the developments. I forgot the place where Courtney mom and Icicle works at. Icicle is kind of lamenting the fact that um, things are getting closer, like the the project's coming ever so closely. And Courtney's mom enters and you know ask ask him if he's all right. If, you know he seems a little bit off. He responds like, "No, I'm good. I'm I'm doing I'm doing fine." And Courtney's mom, in another moment, is like, it, it, "It's either she has a mild mild crush on him, or she's just too nice. I can't tell by this point." She invites him and his family to dinner. Like, like you know what? You need a break. Why don't you come to my house? Let's 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 make some dinner. Let's let's get this. Let's let's have some fun. Um, so he accepts. Um, I believe we cut to. No, we don't get to that yet. Uh, we get the pat. Um. 
Rick and yeah, Rick and uh, Beth head over to the to the to the shop to. Um, they're invited by Pat. I, well, not really. Like they go to Pat. Like they they ask him why are you basically supporting Courtney on this. You know, trying to recruit to recruit um, Henry Jr. But Pat says he has his reason. But Pat gives him another um, assignment for them to do. While well, everyone everyone's off doing their own thing. Like Courtney's trying to is considering um, recruiting Henry Jr. Um, Yolanda's got her own stuff to deal with. Um. Yeah, basically, everything's a fluctuation. These two are basically, yeah, you, you guys are normal right now. You guys go focus on, do some research on it. And, um, oh, I remember. So, I forgot. There was another thing I forgot to mention. So, when we were in the scene where Courtney was pitching Pat the idea of recruiting Henry Jr., he was also talking to her about... So, um, there was another superhero team I was a part of besides the JSA. Besides being the sidekick to Starman... I was also a member of the Seven Knights. The Seven something, I'm sorry. I, I already forgot. Um, that included a knight, a, I think a precursor or a homage to the Green Arrow. Um, all these other characters that we don't get to see in the JSA, including one member called the Shining Knight. And then we cut to the, the school in the early morning where we see the, the janitor dude um, who, who saved Courtney a couple weeks ago with his sword. And... Yeah, okay, let's be honest. He's the shiny knight. He may not be a JSA member, but he is a superhero, like we all predicted. However, the the, the, the um the concerning thing is that um uh, while he's mopping with the, while he's mopping, he he picks up his uh, his mop and then for a brief moment it's it's the staff. It's the cosmic staff. So um could he be the originator? Could he be the person who gave Starman his um staff? Who knows? We'll probably figure it out somewhat soon. Um so anyway, back to the Fast forward a little bit. Um, Courtney does pay um, Henry Jr. a visit at the at the hospital. The, the conversation is tense. It's not going well. Uh, and again, Courtney, not the best for keeping his, her secret identity unlocked. Already, she's up to two people, two strangers in her life that already know her identity. So let's let's just be honest. These guys not the best with superheroes' identities or secret identities at all. Being honest with it. Um, so that doesn't end well. That conversation doesn't end well. Cordy just basically tells him, like, yeah, you're not in the right state of mind to be talking about this, so come to me when you're ready to talk about it. And Cordy just leaves. Um, then we cut to the Dugan residence, where Pat is seeing, uh, Courtney's mom cooking a bunch of stuff, but stressed over she is not made for the kitchen, and Pat's there to comfort her, and there, I'll, I'll take over dinner, don't worry, you go, um... You go take care of other things. As well as, you know, Pat wants to tell Courtney's mom. They're, they're still on this. They He still wants to tell her the truth about Stargirl and, you know, the, the new JSA. He, he wants her to know everything by this point. But Courtney's trying to, like, still kind of hold him back a little bit. Try to stop him from doing so. Uh, but then Courtney gets the interruption that... Um, so the guy she likes, her father, who is Icicle, and the two, par- the two grandparents are there for dinner. So Courtney's like, oh, damn, I was not expecting this tonight. Uh, but what we were also not expecting tonight is, sorry about that, um, that back at the hospital, Henry Jr. is still there, still being with his dad and whatsoever. Yolanda appears as Wildcat to basically frighten him. And another thing, these guys, they don't know how to hide their identities well. Like, already, Henry Jr. knew, you're, you're, you're Yolanda. And Yolanda's like, basically like, hey, stay away from my friends, stay away from everyone. Like, don't, you know, they are my only friends left. You, you, don't fuck with them. Like, you already screwed me over, don't do that. And I'm still confused, like, why Henry Jr. did that in the first place, with the leaking in the picture. Like, he seemed like a nice dude at first before everything happened, so I'm just, I'm just curious. That's, at least that's my opinion. That's, a, that's my opinion on the matter. Um, anyway, frightening section over, we cut back to, I'm not sure, I'm going to shoehorn this in, in out of the way. Uh, so while Beth and um, Rick are doing the research that Pat um, assigned them to, apparently there was some, there was a group called the Other Founding Fathers of Blue Valley, who set up these systems, these pathways, these tunnels underneath Blue Valley so that they can move in secret. So, considering the fact that they've already recently discovered that the Injustice Society also has access to similar tunnels, there could be some connection here that they need to figure out um, pretty soon. So, back to uh, the Duke and um, Whitmore household. Dinner's underway. It's chicken dumpling, which... I don't know. Like, I'm, I'm, I actually was pretty hungry. Like, I looked at the food. Like, this looks pretty edible. Um, so, anyway. Um, so, they're enjoying dinner. We're slowly seeing the tensions between... You know, slowly but surely, they're, they're starting to figure out that, like, hey, these these other people aren't, you know... They're not entirely normal. Um, at first. Um, also, 
I, I there was a moment where Courtney's mom and Icicle were looking at each other like, come on. Please do not do any sort of cheating storyline. Come on. I can't. I mean, yes, Courtney's mom is beautiful, but come on. You, you took you, She took that long to find Pat. At least give, I don't, I don't know. But anyway, um, the conversation seems to be going fine. That sort of thing. And then I believe, yeah, so I think Icicle was trying to interrogate Pat for a bit. Like, hey, if you're a mechanic, you can do whatever you want. Why come back to Blue Valley? And Pat obviously has his generic answer. Like, oh, Blue Valley's my home. Uh, Courtney's mom grew up here. We have connections here. It makes sense for us to move back home. Um, so while Courtney's off getting more chicken dumplings for the group. Um, also, I don't understand Courtney at all. Like, you obviously need oven mitts to get something out of an oven. Like, I don't know why she does that. Um, but, of course, obviously it's meant to um, give us a clue for later on. So while she's bringing over the container to um, Icicle, who wanted more... Um, while there, everyone's distracted with a dog, Icicle accidentally takes the container from Courtney with no gloves. So Courtney obviously realizes that, oh, damn, this guy's Icicle. So she tells Pat about this. Pat's like, I'm not sure. Like, it could be, but it's like, it's obviously like, it's just a coincidence. Maybe he's just, like, more tolerant to the heat. Um, but the dinner eventually ends, and... Um, Courtney has a, a very shy, awkward conversation with the guy she likes, um, Icicle's son, seeming that they're going to get together pretty soon. And, you know, Courtney obviously being a little bit scared that Icicle is basically in her house. But once they all leave, Courtney goes to get the staff to go, you know, not to fight Icicle since they already, they failed at that once, but to, um, figure out if he is Icicle by maybe sensing his energy or whatsoever. But the, the crucial point is that the, um, Courtney's mom comes downstairs while Courtney and Pat are talking and sees the staff glow up and, you know, just falls to the ground on its own. So, um, yeah, they have a lot of explaining to do next week. And to end off the episode, um, Henry Jr. is at the hospital, still with his dad. Even after the visit from Courtney, the visit from Yolanda, he's still there. Um, but then the lawyer comes in and, um, is basically asking for his signatures because there were some clause in, like, um, his father's will or something that like if he's on life support for an extended amount of time, um, these need to be signed. Um, however, since Henry Jr. has powers um, to read his mind, he finds out that it's actually a hoax. It's actually a scam. Uh, Henry Jr. goes to kill him by accident. And then conveniently by the same time, Henry Brainway himself wakes up. So now the ISA is back to full power. We got everyone's here. Um, so, so now it's like, when are things going to hit the fan? And will that be next week? I hope so. And that was it for this week. Um, so, again, I really enjoyed this week. I We got a little bit more focus on Brainwave, but also some partial focus on like his son. Like We're, we're slowly seeing them rise together as a father-son duo. Um, seeing how close Courtney is getting to Icicle. How wrong it is that Courtney's mom and Icicle are exchanging these looks. Um... I think the new JSA, like, you, you know, Yolanda, Beth, and Rick, I'm just, I don't know, like, I know the show's about Stargirl, and it's, we kind of got, we're, we're kind of relegating them already to, like, their supporting characters. Like, I understand that every week we have to have some major progress with, like, their stories. Like, I understand that. I just, I don't know, like, when it comes to, I've seen enough superhero shows by this point to know that when they start doing that, they're going to keep doing that. Um, unless there's, like, a character focus episode, and then they go back to normal. Um, so I hope that's not the case. I hope it's, I, I felt like they didn't, they didn't do that much this week. Um, but I get, I understand this is all about Courtney. This is her show. I get that, but I don't know. Like I was kind of expecting a little bit more from them. Hopefully next week we'll, we will, um, benching Cindy was an interesting decision. I do respect the decision. It, it meant, it was meant to give us some focus on Henry Jr. And you know, that side of the ISA. Um, but it's all leading to the, um, the big event, like, you know, the, the new America, the new society. That's all leading to that. How will that work? We'll hopefully find out some more details next weekend. But I, overall, I really did enjoy this episode. Um, I give it two thumbs up. Um, can't wait to see what else this, this show has in store for us because again, I'm really digging the show. I'm really loving it. And I can't wait to see, um, how this is all going to, um, weave together at the end, you know, since we are approaching the end. Um, and I believe I am not forgetting anything else. So I think that's going to do it for me, guys. So if you're unaware, this was What's on the Two from Action. If you want to know what we're doing overall 
on this show besides our Stargirl reviews. Um, we do Doom Patrol Season 2 episode reviews each and every Saturday after a brand new episode on Thursday on, on HBO Max and DC Universe, as well as Perry Mason episode reviews each and every Monday after a brand new episode on Sundays on HBO. But if you don't care about Stargirl episode reviews, we will be back next week with the next review. And... Yeah, so nothing really on coming up with the uh, with the schedule. Things are gonna stay normal for at least another month. So I have a whole month to plan out like what everything's gonna be after this wave of shows. I I honestly can't tell what what the hell I'm gonna do. Huh? I'm being honest. Um, the shows like plan on like maybe a two week basis. Hell, the intro, the, the new intro that you saw at the beginning of the show, um, that took like a full hundred episodes for that to happen. Even though I kind of had the idea in my mind for like. I think around episode 25, I was thinking about that intro, but it took us an additional 75 episodes for us to get to that intro, which I hope you all enjoy. It's only the first iteration. Hopefully, I'll be able to improve as we go. Hopefully, hopefully by episode 200, it'll be, it'll be a better intro, but I don't know. Um, yeah, I think that's gonna. Be, I think that's it. I think uh, so. Nothing's changing. Um, schedules so far are fine for now. Uh, so no, I don't expect any sort of major changes anytime soon. But anyway, um, with that being said, however, um, again, this was What's on the Two from Action X. If you want to see more of What's on the Two, specifically our DC Stargirl episode reviews, please subscribe to Action X on YouTube.com. Ring the bell for notification when the next review goes live. Like, favor, share if you want to, but it does help us out in the long run, guys. It really does. As well as follow us on social media to be up to date on our next video or any updates on videos or just anything that I'm tweeting about. Um, yeah, um, and uh, I forgot. Um, damn, I forgot. Well, I forgot what co part comes after this part. Like I, I haven't done this in like five, six days, so I already forgot. Like, what did I say after? What, what was my next line? Um, what's my line? Oh yeah, I don't, I don't have anyone else. I'm, I'm alone in my house. Um, yeah, I think that's it. I think, I think that's it. So, so I'll see you, Star Dazers. Um, next week. Peace out.